the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to midweek Lenten service at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. May Almighty God grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is the great promises of God that we remember. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy and gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you this day. Some of our sin we know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which we are ashamed. But some are known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore us, that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Our preparation for this night in our midweek Lenten series is, uh, well, we are studying the second, uh, we are studying Philippians, the second chapter, and this is the passage of which we conclude our Passion Sundays um, each year. This week we are focusing on, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, that particular passage. To prepare ourselves for reflections on this particular passage in this particular day, we're, we have a few, uh, we have an Old Testament passage from Numbers, from Kings, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, and uh, we have a psalm for this day, Psalm 22. Now we are reading the second half of Psalm 22, the pivot on which the distress turns and the praise begins. Uh, this is the psalm, of course, that we recognize from Jesus at the cross. And before I read the first Kings passage, I need to do just a little bit of setup for it. In, uh, in the verses that precede uh, our first Kings passage, uh, Ahab is uh, one of the kings of Israel who has uh, stepped out of line. He has married Jezebel, and Jezebel has brought into the land of uh, the Israelites, into God's land. Uh, uh, Jezebel has brought in priests of Baal. And, uh, of course, as if it's going to be a compromised religion. And, uh, of course, people, uh, they are hungry to follow the God that is, uh, the God that we so often call Lord in the Hebrew Scriptures, that's uh, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord in the Hebrew Scriptures. That is the name of God that was given to Moses at the burning bush that we so often translate, I am that I am. I'm fond of translating it as the God that is, as opposed to well, certainly in this case, the god Baal, uh, which uh, is a god that is not. And so the Hebrew people have been challenged to make a decision one way or another. Uh, since they have done this, there has been a great drought in the land. And uh, as we are very well aware, during any economic catastrophe, uh, there's plenty of blaming and finger pointing that goes around. It has come down to Elijah being the faithful prophet uh, to stand up and invite the Hebrew people to believe in the God they confess rather than the God that uh, King Ahab and Jezebel have uh, instructed them to confess. And he does this by hosting the Super Bowl of Prophets. I just absolutely love this story. It is an amazing, fantastic story if you're not careful. 1 Kings 18, if you go look it up, you're going to find yourself reading backwards to get more of this story into your hands, and you'll be reading afterwards to see where else it goes. Elijah has just come out of the desert um, and has just uh, survived 
with a widow and uh, resurrected her son. This is the widow that fed him uh, from a jar of meal that was practically emptied. And um, it's a showdown, and it, it's of such amazing proportions, it almost seems like it should be in a comic book. But sadly, we do know that these kind of showdowns do exist in all the brutality when religions collide. I am leaving out of the reading today, very, quite deliberately, all you have to do is read one more verse, verse 40 in that chapter 18, and you'll see how brutal things become. Now our reading, 1 Kings 18, chapter, 30, uh, ver chapter 18, verse 30 through 39. Then Elijah said to all the people, the Hebrew people, come closer to me. And all the people came closer to Elijah. First, Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord that has been thrown down. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. Now with the stones, Elijah built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seeds. And he put wood on, on the altar in order, cut and cut the bowl in pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And then he said, pour the water on a second time. And they did it a second time. And then he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So that water ran down all around the altar and filled the trench with water. Now this is Elijah's response to what the prophets of Baal had done without the water. They had put on their altar the wood and, a, and an offering of bull and an offering of a bull cut into pieces. And they had cried out, 450 of them, calling out to the god Baal. The contest was without any human being lighting the fire. Let's see the god that responds. And now Elijah, it is Elijah's turn. He has already been mocking them, telling them to pray louder and to cry to their God louder. Maybe their God has wandered off someplace. Maybe their God is not paying attention or maybe their God is busy meditating instead of being responsible to their needs, responsive to their needs. <laughs> and of course, they have withered and become exhausted and now it is Elijah's turn. The preparations are there. Keep in mind, there's been no rain for three years. At the proper time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are the God of Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that my people know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you, you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the Hebrew people, all the people of Israel saw it, they fell down on their faces and said, The Lord is indeed God. The Lord is indeed God. Do you see what I mean by comic book, by graphic novel proportions, an amazing battle? Of course, the fire of the Lord falling upon this and lighting it up would have been a lightning strike, which would have worked out very well with the rains that immediately followed. If you read verses further, this is the moment when Elijah 
shouts to the people to kill all the prophets of Baal. And they do so. And when King Ahab tells Queen Jezebel about this, she makes a vow and issues an order for Elijah's head, and he goes on the run again. The cycle doesn't seem to end. Our psalm this day is Psalm 22. We begin with verse 25. Because of you, I offer praise in the great congregation. I pray my vows in the presence of his worshipers. Let the lowly eat and be satisfied. Let all who seek the Lord praise the Lord. Always be of good cheer. Let all the ends of the earth pay heed and turn to the Lord. And the people of all nations prostrate themselves before you. For kingship is the Lord's, and he rules the nations. All those in full vigor shall eat and prostrate themselves. All at death's door, whose spirit flags, shall bend the knee before the Lord. Offspring shall serve the Lord. The Lord's frame shall be proclaimed from generation to come. They shall tell of his generosity to people yet born. For the Lord has acted. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bless the poor with the kingdom of heaven. Teach us to put our trust in the Heavenly Father and to seek your kingdom rather than to imitate the powerful or envy the rich so that we may serve you now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians, the second chapter. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bend, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Heavenly Father. The word of the Lord. Here in this passage, we remember Christ's passion. We remember the cross. We remember that he went to this. 
with the full ability to call down that fire from heaven and vanquish his enemies. But this is not God's way. Vanquishing the enemies through a battle of proving our religion is superior to another's is not the one that we fight. We are the one to make witness, witness to the Christ, to the Jesus, to the God who saves, the very God that is who becomes faithful and obedient to the Heavenly Father and to humanity, incarnate living with us. This is the one who does go to the cross. This is the one who overcomes our desire to win the victory ourselves in the very human way, in the way that vanquishes our foes, rather than, rather than in the way that serves, that loves, that shows the deeper and greater love. Just as the people fell on their faces, just as the psalm called for knees to bend, this is the kind of God to which we become most humble. evening for our prayers, I bring a prayer written by Lynn Unger. It is brought to us by our Synod, which through their emails, and all of us know how to receive emails from our Synod, uh, through the emails uh, has arrived at us a prayer for these days. The name of the prayer is Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times, ceasing from travel, ceasing from buying and selling? Give up, just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center, center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in another's hands. Surely this has come clear. Do not reach out with your hands. Reach out with your heart. Reach out with your words. Reach out with all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love, your love for better or worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we shall live. I invite you to offer your petitions now.
Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the Almighty God, merciful Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. Peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.